cookies. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a few things today. The first one, hopefully you guys can see my screen, is how to look up what you have submitted and the feedback that I have left for you guys. So for example, if I go into my student view on chapter two uh, essay. All right, so sometimes after you've submitted an assignment, you can click on the assignment itself and come back in here and see the submission details. And if I've left any comments, you'll see them right here on the side. And, and perhaps you'll see an attached file where I've provided you with feedback comments. So obviously download that. But sometimes I leave feedback comments right here under submission details. You click that. And then right here you click on view feedback. All right, and what that does is it opens the document and you can, I think, make this bigger, but I'm not really sure. Um, and you can see that I have created a comment here to give feedback on this document, okay? And then if you don't agree, you could say like, I don't understand, blah, 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 blah. And you could hit save and then that'll go back to me and we can go back and forth like that. But in a lot of your writing, if I don't include an attachment, I've left you some feedback in this fashion if I haven't written something over here. I usually try to say, see my feedback or see my comments. And in that case, either look for a attached file or click on that view feedback option and see what kind of information I have left for you, okay? So that's the first thing I wanted to show you, make sure you guys are actually getting the feedback. Because I spent a lot of time, that's why it takes so long sometimes for your papers to come back, is because I'm actually, um, taking a lot of time to give you guys that feedback. So the other thing I wanted to show you was how to access the library. So what you do is you log into my FSC and click on library resources and it should open and close that the library search. So what I would suggest is going into advanced search. So for those of you that were told you needed to find some more scholarly articles, this is how you do that. So let's say you're writing your paper on emotions, okay? If you had an author in mind or a journal title, you could always change that. But for now, we'll just go with emotions. What you want to do is check off items with full text and articles from scholarly publications. And you want to go ahead and put in the publication year so you don't get stuff that's more than five years old, okay? So I hit search. And then I can scroll down and I can, if I want to, I can click on any of these. So I've already, um, I'm gonna, how do I move this over? I've already opened a few. So let me go ahead and show you. So like you could just click on full text. It opens up this window. You can read a little bit about it. I also wanted to show you guys, if you click this button here, cite and you scroll down, you'll see the APA citation. And while it's great because it kind of gives you some of the information, it's not always 100% accurate. Like right here, you can see like they capitalized every word in the title. That's not actually APA correct. And if there's an edited, it doesn't actually get cited in this way. There's actually a different way to cite this. So this APA, this one's all wrong. Um, what you'd really want to do is head over to Owl Purdue. I've been here a few times. Um, that's not the one I wanted. Let's just do this. Owl Purdue APA. This is the one I want. Okay. APA style edition. I usually get a formatting guide. And then you can see, you can look up all the different ways things can be cited. So if it's from an electronic source, like a website or, you know, Wikipedia, YouTube, Twitter, all of that stuff is on here. If you can't find a particular type of source and you don't know how to cite it, just email me and I'll help you figure it out. Sometimes I don't know either, but I've been doing this enough times that I can usually figure it out. This also gives you other information like um, how to, where is it at? Like the order of your headings, like how it should be formatted. Okay, like that. Uh, another useful information. So if we come back over here, and we'd say, you know, we want to look at this article. I want to read it. You can either click on the HTML full text, which will look like this. And it just sort of, you just read it right here in the window. Or you can look at the PDF of the file. Okay. And it'll download the PDF. And you can read the whole thing. Okay. So I already had a couple 
ready to go. Go back on that one. All right. Okay, so I'm going to actually go to a document that I created. So I'll make a new one real quick. So when you're making a new document that you're going to use for um, APA formatting, if I go back to my Al Purdue and we go to general format, you can actually see that the font, you actually have multiple fonts. So all of these right here are what you're allowed to use. Back when I was in school, you could only use Times New Roman size 12. That's just what I like to use. That's what I'm used to seeing. So you enter a few times to come down to the center of the page. You hit center, and then you're going to type in the title of your paper here. Okay, then you're going to type in your name, and you're going to type in the institution you are affiliated with, which is Eastern Florida State College. There is some other information that students can technically put, but for my paper, as I've said numerous times, I don't want any of that. This is fine. If you really insist on putting which class you're in, you could put that here, along, you know, and then you put your section number right there. So then we come up here, we double click to get into the header and we put a shortened version of the title of our paper. We hit tab twice to get over to the far side and that's where we're going to then insert our page number. This font needs to match. I'm gonna hit control A to select it all. I'm gonna right click and I'm just gonna change the font right here. Make it the same as down here. I can close the header and footer, all right? Then I'm going to hit enter a few times and then I'm going to press control and press enter at the same time and it's going to insert a page break. All right, so you can see I was already centered. So this is where the title of paper needs to match title of your paper here. We we'll go there. If you had a heading. Go here in bold. OK, back to the side. And then you always indent the first sentence of every paragraph using the tab key on your keyboard. All right, notice that my, my spacing is not correct on all the stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Control A to highlight everything. I'm gonna right click, go down to paragraphs. What I wanna do is make sure that I don't have any spaces before or after. I'm going to check off this box so it doesn't add space between my paragraphs, and I'm going to make sure that I'm double spaced. Hit OK, and it's all correctly spaced now. All right, now I already have a document that I saved where I did all of this already. All right, so you can see I have that. At the end of this document, I hit Control Enter, and I came down here and I put references. I added the book right there okay and that is cited up here as this one right here okay so this is so that you use in-text citations or shorthand versions of the full citation so that someone's reading it and they're like wow that information is really really cool i want to learn more about that or like are they sure that doesn't sound right that's crazy they can go down to your reference list and they can look up the name of that stuff that that reference and they can go read that for themselves okay so you can see this one when there's three or more authors like this one has, you can shorten it like I did for our textbook and for this one here. OK. Whereas when you have one or two like this one only has two, you put that you put both of their names. So it's the author's names and like that. Now let's say let's go back to our web browser here. Let's say we were looking up something from the CDC. Uh, let's say CDC drug facts. That sounds good. OK, so this is our page that we're going to cite in our document. So we come down here to our Word document. Scroll to the bottom. All right. Oh, my font doesn't look right right there. But anyway, um, and I'm going to say centers for. Ease. Control. Oh, my gosh and prevention CDC and then what year was this published right here page last review 2019 so I'm going to show you guys the general format for a website is right here 
Okay. Now it does get a little funky if you're using a government like document that's posted on a website. This isn't really that. Now, if I was opening up one of these reports, it would be a little different. If I'm just using this page, this is how I would cite it. So I need to know 2019, November 12th. Then you put the name of the page. So as you can see here, title of page. You see drug. Oh my goodness, guys. And now if it had a different like website page, you would put the site name, but if the site name and the and the author, which in this case doesn't have a last name, it's the CDC, I don't have to repeat it right here. And then it's just the URL. Okay. Not in italics. Oops. There we go. Let's do Times New Roman size 12. Somehow I got off. There we go. And then, of course, up here, the very first time I use that, I would need to write Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And then I could put it in brackets like that. 2019. Okay. Or if I'd already said that somewhere in my paper, if like it said I was like the Centers for Ease Control or whatever and Prevention, CDC. State that there are blah, 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 blah. CDC 2019, okay? And then in future references, I, I wouldn't need to write it out like that. It would just be uh, CDC 2019 in parentheses like that, okay? So that's how you do that too. And then you would save this file, save as, right? Save as, and then you really wanna include your name in the document and then save it wherever you want. Upload that and then you're good to go. All right, so this video is basically done and this video went over how to see your comments in Canvas, how to search for stuff in the library and how to format your APA paper. So if you have any other questions, please, please, please let me know.